Elm has a great package for producing nice-looking sites using Google's material design language with a little effort in Elm MDL. So let's take advantage of it. We'll start off with a new project and add the package. We'll start off just pasting in the counter.elm example from the Elm MDL repository's examples. Okay, and we will run the reactor and open up Firefox. Okay, so here we have it. It's material in action and it just works. So you can see as I click around, this is material design CSS. Okay, so let's see how all this is done. So in your model, we have a field called MDL. Uh, this tracks the material.model. It's called the model container. And in our model function or init, uh, we use material.model. This is what you should always use for your initial MDL model store. Down here in the messages, you need to tag messages that are coming to MDL so that you can route them uh, or dispatch them appropriately later. And the update, when MDL messages come in, we update appropriately. So we pass them through material.update, pass the message in, and this will return our model and command to tuple. We'll look at the view. Sorry, this should say view. I made one tiny change. We'll get back to that. Okay, so this is the view. And so this is from the documentation. So you make uh, instances of the button component. So one for the increase button and one for the reset button. And it takes arguments, a message constructor, which is the MDL, which lifts those messages up to the message type so that we can uh, dispatch them. An instance ID, so this is the list of zero. And every component needs a distinct instance. So this is sort of how you track different buttons. And this is kind of the, the key thing that uh, let you have reduced boilerplate when using MDL uh, over using typical Elm architecture components. And then you need a reference to the model collection, which is in your model, model.mdl. Um, so this is the whole point. Uh, we don't have to add fields separately for uh, the increase and reset button. They're all tracked in that model.mdl. So here we have the increase button. Uh, so button.render, it knows the message type. It's ID 0. It uses our model.mdl container. This is uh, material.button. Uh, so material.button on click sends an increase message. And then we added some CSS. So this is 24 picks margin to the right of the button. And then the contents of this button are a text node that says increase. And then we have our second button, same, same deal, but it's for reset and it sends the reset message. And then this piece right here, material.scheme.top, is what loads the Google MDL CSS. So if we look here, we can see right here there's a style uh, at the top of our um, div. And this is a style tag that imports the material CSS and then the material icons and the Roboto font. So that all is provided by this piece right here. So ultimately when you are doing production code, you really want to just put that stuff into your index.html file. Um, you don't want to have Elm spitting it out. There are some nice possibilities for being able to do that in the future with some trivial native code that will actually uh, sort of do what you want. Rather, right, right now the problem is you have uh, CSS in the body, and this doesn't optimize well in browsers. Anyway, so for now, this is a great way to prototype, and then when you want to go to production, you can move uh, the CSS imports into your main HTML file. All right, moving on look at the program. So really this is just your normal program. We have no subscriptions here. If you want to use certain MDL components, you have to include MDL subscriptions. We'll deal with that later. Uh, so this is just normal looking, right? So the big, the big takeaway is the layout, the buttons, and the material.scheme.top. Okay, so let us use a layout. Layout provides an overall layout for your application. So we'll add one with just a header at first. Let's go to our view function. We'll rename this to view body. And we'll introduce our own view. So view takes a model into an HTML message. And here we're going to call layout.render MDL. We'll pass it our MDL container. And we pass it a list of um, options. So we'll call layout.fixed header. So this just says we should have a header that's fixed to the top of the screen as we scroll. And then we give it the 
record for its configuration. So here we're going to say there's a header and it's just going to contain an H1. We'll add some styles to it. So it'll be padding 2 rem. We'll have a text node that says counter. Then we'll have a drawer. So this is all the configuration that you have to do. So there's no drawer. Tabs, this is a two tuple of a list of tab, text, and a list of options. And we don't want any tabs, so we just have to give it the right shape. And then for the main, we'll use our view body and pass the model in. And so this will be sort of the main section of the layout. All right, so let's refresh. And I messed something up because I don't have a layout. So let's import material.layout as layout. We'll refresh. Okay, so now we have this giant header here, and everything else still works. So we'll skip on the drawer for now, but we're going to add some tabs, okay? So let's go back here and go back to our layout. And in the tabs, we will add the tabs themselves go here. So we'll have text milk, so that's just a text node, and then text oranges. Okay, so if we open it up now, That all just works. Now, if we look at the console here, nothing's happening. We'd like to know uh, which tab you've clicked, right? Because this, these are just sort of elements that don't do anything. So we can tell the layout what messages we'd like it to give us. So that's just an option up here. So we can say layout dot on select tab. We'll say emit a select tab message, but we don't have one of those yet, so we'll add it to our messages. So we'll have select tab, and it takes an integer, and we spell it correctly. And then in our update, we'll handle it. So we'll say, when you call select tab on some number, then we will just do a debug. So debug.log select tab, and we'll include the number, and we'll just not change the model, right? And then if we come here now, we can refresh. And as we click things, we can see which tab index was selected. So next, we will provide a couple of different views depending on the selected tab, and we'll track it in our model. So let's go to the model. OK, so we're going to add a selected tab. It's an integer. And in our initial model, we will set it to 0. And in our update, when we select tab, we will get rid of the debugging. We don't care about that anymore. And we will just say set the selected tab equal to the number and don't send any commands. And then in view body, we're actually going to change this view body to view counter because now this is just the counter application. And in our main, we will still call view body. Now we'll add a new view body. It takes a model to HTML message. And it will do case model dot select the tab of and if it's zero, then we will view counter model. And if it's one, we will just have some text for something else. And if it's anything else, we'll say it's a 404. And that should work. Let's check it out. And so this seems okay, but that's awful, right? That's okay. That's awful. So why is that? Well, I can tell you. Down here in view counter, this is where we are including material.scheme.top. That's no good. We will come up to the view itself, and we will pipe it there. And now, if we refresh, it works like you'd expect. And actually, I think a nicer way to do this since it's called top, I kind of prefer to do this. So let's do material.scheme.top and pipe this in that way. That way that it's at the top and that kind of represents where it is. Um, I do hate that that got rendered that way though. I'm not sure why. Anyway, it still work. I just wish that pipe were on the same line. Okay, so now play, let's play with one more thing today. We'll play with colors. So you can specify a color scheme to the material.scheme. So first off, we're going to import 
material.color as color. We'll go back to our view. And when we call material.scheme, instead of just calling top, we can call top with scheme. And it wants two colors, so we'll call color.teal, and you can look and see what colors are available, and color.light green. Okay. And so let's refresh. All right, cool. But we don't really have any selected colors. So that's what the light green would be. It would be our highlight. But it's not being used. So we need to tell the layout which tab index is selected. And so that can be done in the options there. So we can say select the tab is model.selectedTab. And now when we refresh, our select the tab has, let me kill this, has a nice underline. So one last trick. Uh, the second element in the tabs to tuple is a list of styles. So down here, this empty list is just a list of styles. So we're going to tell it, use color.background. Let me actually do this, break this up so that it's a little bit easier to read. Color.background. We want to use the color teal in this, uh, the style S400. And if you don't know what that means, you can look at sort of how material design works and it'll start to make sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look. And now we have this nice kind of version of this color that's just a different tint. And so this is looking pretty good with pretty little effort. That's pretty great. In today's episode we had a quick look at introducing material design light into a project, showing both how to get started with it as well as how to use the layout module to build layouts rapidly. I'm thrilled that this early in Elm's existence we have such a fantastically well-constructed general purpose layout package. I'll see you soon.